Intel's next-gen CPUs might have AMD on the lookout. Framework keeps their promises, and AMD is going extreme. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're going to be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. We're going to start off today talking about the i9-13900K, which... It's a bad name, okay? There's too many syllables in there. The i9-13900K popping up with some intriguing details of what's gonna be entailed in their cache setup. According to what we're seeing here, there's gonna be 36 megabytes of L3 cache on this Raptor-like chip and giving it a total of 68 megabytes of total cache. The 13900K is expected to have 55% more cache than the current 12900K, which in case you're not familiar, AMD has labeled the L3 cache as game cache and they're attributing that to a lot of the gaming improvements that they're seeing on their Ryzen chips as well as things like the 5800X3D. So including 55% more cache on an architecture that's already really good by Intel could potentially give them an even better leg up when it comes to gaming performance. We don't have a ton of firm details on the 13900K. It does look like it's going to be launching later this year and it's probably going to be 24 cores and 32 threads having 8P cores and 16E cores. And according to some rumors, it might boost up to 5.8 gigahertz. It's gonna be a fast chip, but also have a ton of cache, 68 megabytes of total cache, as we mentioned, with several other SKUs being listed right here. If we just wanna compare that to what AMD has out right now, the 5800X has 32 megabytes of L3 cache, 36 if you include the L2. Something like the 5950X has 64 megabytes of L3 cache, you add in the L2 and you're closer to 72 megabytes. And then the 5800X3D that launched now has 96 megabytes of L3 cache. You toss in that L2 and you got 100 megabytes. Obviously, this does appear to be the way that the CPU companies are making their chips faster for gaming, but also Intel has reinvented the wheel when it comes to their hybrid architecture. If you look at Alder Lake, it's doing really good things. If Raptor Lake can increase the IPC, can increase increase the clock speed, and they toss in more cash. I am very excited for what's coming down the pipeline later this year when it comes to the CPU competition. I wanna know right now, before you go digging deep on this, Intel or AMD, which one has your votes? Let me know down below in the comments. But Framework is letting you know that they're keeping their promises with them announcing that they have the 12th generation Intel chips available for their Framework laptop. You can now go and order this over on their website where you can get the 12th generation and Alder Lake chips available for pre-order right now, as well as a few other improvements, such as two and a half gigabit Ethernet networking. So you can buy the laptop itself, currently starting at 1049 in case you want the whole laptop with up to six plus eight cores on the Alder Lake architecture. You can also get the DIY edition in case you don't want things like Windows pre-installed, but then there's also the upgrade kit, which is kind of the key philosophy behind framework and what they're doing. They wanna make sure that you are able to do whatever you want with your laptop and you don't have to throw the whole thing out if something new comes along. So having an upgrade kit that's not currently for sale, it's only for getting notified, but still the promise does seem to be uh, going forward in being fulfilled with the 12th gen upgrade kit being there framework, keeping their promises. It's good to see that that $250,000 investment from Linus isn't going to waste. And I'm gonna waste no time talking about the GTX 1630. In yesterday's episode of Hot News, we talked about the fact that it was being rumored to exist. Well, now there's more details coming out about what the exact specifications of it are and the release date. The GTX 1630 is looking to launch May 31st, being announced at Computex. And the details on it are that it's probably a bit worse than the GTX. GTX 1650. It has about 370 fewer CUDA cores. It has worse memory bandwidth coming in at only 96 gigabytes per second compared to the original GTX 1650, which has 128 gigabytes per second. And it's about half of the current GTX 1650, which has GDDR6. But in order to make up for some of this, the core clock on the GTX 1630 is going up to 1800 megahertz. It's still gonna remain at 75 watt TDP, 
but you probably will get slightly less than GTX 1650 performance. And the kind of speculated price is under $150. I think it probably has to be closer to that $100 to really make a ton of sense. I would consider even picking this one up just for a regular office PC. That's not gonna be terrible gaming performance. Can, just looking at the teraflops, the RX 6400 is gonna have 3.5 teraflops of gaming performance, whereas the GTX 1630 is gonna only have 1.8. Faster than a PS4, but uh, it's got it's got a cost cheaper than 150 in my book. What? Let me know what you think of the GTX 1630 now that we have some more details on it. And there's more details coming out on mining unlocks for the RTX cards that have the V3 LHR, which is the RTX 3050 and the 3080 12 gig. There's currently 100% unlock by NiceHash for the LHR V2, but now they're announcing that they have a 90% unlock for this LHR V3 in case you were using those cards for crypto mining, which is the perfect time to talk about crypto stonks. Bitcoin up 2.5% in the last 24 hours, which keeps it below $30,000, which is really intriguing. This is the first time in a while where it's been up in the last 24 hours and it stayed below 30 grand. So this is, uh, it looks like it has a bit more resistance at that $30,000 level. Ethereum up less than 1% to be at just under $2,000. Again, strange that it's up over the last 24 hours, but still below two grand and Dogecoin up a third of a percent to be at eight and a half cents, which there's pricing coming down on a whole bunch of stuff. Free springing the UFD deals. Thanks buddy. You're welcome. I always like it when he says you're welcome. We've got the RX 6600 Swift 210 coming out on Amazon for less than MSRP right now. You can pick this up for $300. The MSRP of the 6600 is 330 bucks. So this is 10% less than that. And if we just look at the price history of this card, it was $500 back in March. Uh, towards the end of March, it dropped to about 420. Then in April, it was hovering around the 370 region. For most of May, it's been hovering around MSRP at 330. And now finally it's dropped below that. Yes, my friends, GP use below MSRP. They are here and readily available. This has been available all day. I could have picked up this at any moment that I want it. I don't need a new GPU right now, but in case you do, the GPU is under MSRP, my friends. In case you're looking for a cooler for your CPU, the MSI Mag Core Liquid 280R is only going for $95 over on Amazon right now. It's 21% off. And Apple is hoping that their mixed reality headset's gonna take off. And according to reports, they've actually even shown this device to the company board of directors, which seems to indicate that it's being ready to be announced. Announced. According to Bloomberg, this headset's being planned to be released in 2023, but they're expecting that Apple will have some sort of showcase for it this year. And the fact that it's been shown off to the board of directors likely means that it's getting closer to launch than we think. In case you're not familiar, this thing's supposed to be costing over a thousand dollars and probably isn't gonna be meant for the every person and is probably just a first iteration technology to get Apple on the stepping stone to better mixed reality headsets later on. And speaking of better futures, Sony and Santa Monica Games are bringing that to you in the form of God of War Ragnarok. Before we have a release date, before we even have like really good solid information on this game, Sony detailing the accessibility features that are gonna be built into God of War Ragnarok with a lot of details being unveiled by Sony and the game studio about how they're working to make sure that this game is accessible to a lot of people, which is something I'm very passionate about having a special needs kid, being able to make games more accessible for a wider community out there is always great in my book. So they're gonna have a lot of the accessibility features that were on the original God of War, then some of the extra ones that they brought to the PC port, but then also adding in things like subtitles and captioning, being able to change the font size and color and making sure that it's actually legible because that's probably the worst thing about the original God of War was the text is tiny. It's very hard to see and they'll have more details coming out later about the full implementation of accessibility features, but it's good to see that Sony is prioritizing this and giving this detail to us before they've even come out with the really important information about the game, which we're getting more details about the Witcher 3 next gen upgrade that was supposed to come out at the beginning of this year. Uh, actually, I think it was originally supposed to come out sometime last year. Anyways, it's now uh, Q4 2022, according to the Witcher tw Twitter page, which 
I'll believe it when I see it, man. I've stopped being happy about this. I will play it. It's a free upgrade, so it, like you don't have to buy it again. So I'm very happy about that. But I do not care about this until it's here because it's just broken my heart so many times. And AMD is about to break your PC because they've got extreme chipsets coming to you. We've got some more details coming out about what we're expecting for the next gen AMD chipsets and the fact that there will be three of them, the X670, B650, and X670E with E standing for extreme. Essentially, according to the preliminary indication, it just means it's gonna have PCI Express generation five support as opposed to gen four. So most people will not need to buy this. And from what we're seeing, all of these chipsets will require DDR5. So if you're gonna be on the next gen AMD chips, even if it's on a middle tier one, like the 7600X, it's gonna require DDR5, but you can get by with the B650 instead of an X670E, because again, it's for extreme. We're expecting this to be announced at Computex, which is just next week. So stay tuned for all of that as it's being unveiled. Next week, likely to be a big week when it comes to PC gaming, and we'll keep you updated here on Hot News.